Your Bible says those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So then how do we come into obedience to the Word? Peter said it's through the Spirit. Hallelujah! woo Through the Spirit, we're able to live pure. Through the Spirit, we're able to obey the laws and the commands of God. The Ten Commandments need not be a threat to Spirit-filled people because through the Spirit, we can obey them. Between the power of the mind and the power of the Spirit, we can walk in perpetual victory. We can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. Peter chapter 1, look at verse 22. Now, we want to really carry, uh, uh, cover some ground, so I know you're going to be traveling with me and you're going to stay close, aren't you? Yes, Amen. Notice, if you will, verse 22. Notice Peter said, seeing that you have purified your souls. Hallelujah. Well, we don't purify our souls by accepting the Lord and having his blood to take away our sins. Because my sins is not my soul. Amen. My sins are not me. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. Well, his blood takes my sins from me. But my sins being taken away from me is still not me. Once my sins have been taken away from me, I can still turn around and sin again. Amen. Well, Jesus doesn't want us to live in sin, does he? No. no. Now notice, seeing that you have purified your souls, how? And obeying the truth. And obeying the word. How are we able to obey? Tell me, read it. Yes. Notice, no believer can live according to the word of God without the help of the Holy Ghost. Yes. I said, no believer. Yes. Your Bible says that the carnal mind, it's an enemy of God. Yes. Your Bible says those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So then how do we come into obedience to the word? Peter said, it's through the Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo -woo. Through the Spirit, we're able to live pure. Through the Spirit, we're able to obey the laws and the commands of God. The Ten Commandments need not be a threat to Spirit-filled people. Because through the Spirit, we can obey them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, no man has obeyed them in himself. It is impossible to live pure in ourselves. But through the Spirit of God, we can be obedient to the Word of God. Through the Spirit of God, we can live Pure. Are y'all here? Yeah. Now notice if you will, look at verse 2. Notice Peter said, we are the elect. We are the chosen of God according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Through what? Read it. Through it read it again. Through what? And unto what? Read it. Notice, notice. Through the sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost, we can be obedient to God. Amen. Notice, Peter always connected 
purification, sanctification, and our ability to live obedient to God, he always connected that to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Well, shout, fill me, Lord. Lord. Come on, say it like you mean it. Fill me, Lord. See, without the infilling of the Holy Ghost, nobody can be sanctified. That is, nobody can live obedient to the Word. So we have many disobedient saints. We have many people in the house of God who can't live right because they've never been filled with the Holy Ghost after they've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. They go right back to the same old filth. They go right back to drinking. They go right back to smoking stuff. They go right back to lying. And listen, and then we come up with a doctrine that says because it's saved by grace, it just doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. My Bible says we're to live obedient. My Bible says we're to live pure. My Bible says we're to be sanctified, but that requires the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Wow, look at verse 5. Who are kept? What are we kept from? Listen, if you're kept, that implies you're being kept from something. Well, what are we being kept from? From sin and from the contamination of the world. We're being kept from it. How? Read it. Read it loud, people. By the power of God, Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. That power is to keep you. We are not kept by the blood. We are kept by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus told his disciples after he spilled his blood and he said this blood is being spilt for the erasing of your sins. But then he told them after his blood he said receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive you the Holy Ghost. And when you receive the Holy Ghost you shall receive power to keep you clean. Woo! Can I get an amen? amen? We must preach what the New Testament preachers preached. And they preached the Holy Ghost. Now, why is Peter telling these believers about the Holy Ghost? Because on the day of Pentecost, Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And listen. And Peter saw to it that every believer under his ministry received the same experience he himself had received. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you want everybody to get him. How could Peter not talk about the Holy Ghost when on the day of Pentecost he came like a rushing mighty wind. He came like a fire from heaven. And Peter began to speak in tongues. And, and Peter began to stand up in power. And then he told the church, hey, this is for every one of you. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You have power to be kept. Shame. So much homosexuality in the church. And then you talk to so many Christians and now they believe. Well, people, they've been born that way. Why can't they get married? Listen, when you get the Holy Ghost, you can live right. I said when you get the Holy Ghost, you can walk in line with the Word. Well, look at verse 12. Notice the latter part of verse 12. Notice there it says, Them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from where? 
Notice these believers, Peter, are, he's writing to, they had the Holy Ghost, they, they had the gospel preached with Holy Ghost from heaven. That is with Holy Ghost fire, with Holy Ghost power. Listen, they came into the church under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I remember when I got saved. I got saved in the church that was full of the Holy Ghost. And the preachers who were preaching, three women came from California to Jacksonville to hold a revival. And they were spirit-filled. And they preached like Peter said. They preached with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. And when they preached, the room was filled with fire. The room was filled with power. And that's how I came in this thing. I came in under the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now notice what happens, please. When they came into this thing that way, look at the two verses down. Notice it says, being as obedient children. Being obedient. As obedient what? See, when you come in this thing with Holy Ghost power, you come in able to be obedient. Notice, they're still children. They're still young in the Lord. But because they came in under Holy Ghost power, like when I came in at 17 years old, under Holy Ghost power, I stopped cussing. I stopped drinking. I stopped fornicating. I stopped lying because I came in and they insisted you need to be filled yes. with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's how we become obedient yes. by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Yes. Notice what he says. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former, the former, what? Notice plural lusts. Notice once they came into the Holy Ghost, their fleshly and worldly lusts were canceled. Notice once they came under the influence of the power of the Holy Ghost, their former fleshly and worldly lusts were canceled. Hallelujah. Notice chapter 2. Let me show you something. Look at verse 11. Notice he says, latter part of verse 11 abstain from fleshly lusts which do what notice he didn't say try he didn't say pray that you might be able he simply said do it why because New Testament preachers expected the people to live right because they got the people spirit filled and by the power of the Holy Ghost, say no to what your lust used to crave for. Peter said when you came under the power of the Holy Ghost, the former lust of your flesh, you stopped. Didn't take 25 years. Didn't take two years of counseling. It took Holy Ghost power. Well, you see, we've negated and neglected the Holy Ghost in the church and we've substituted his power with man's psychology. And isn't it amazing? It's not working. Stay with me, please. Go back now to chapter 1. Look at verse 14 again. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts. Next verse. But as he who has called you is holy, 
Read the rest of it. Read it. So be ye holy. Where? All manner of life. All manner of life. Be holy. Be holy. Be holy. How? In all manner of your life. Be holy by the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul said, uh, Peter said, through the Holy Ghost, you can obey the word. Through the Holy Ghost, you can obey God's law. Through the Holy Ghost. Nobody can do it in themselves. Nobody can do it in their flesh. Nobody can do it just because they want to. Oh, you can want to live right. You can, you, you can want to quit sucking on blunts. You can want to do a lot of things. But without power, you simply cannot. But there is power in the Holy Ghost. I said there is power in the Holy Ghost. Power to be kept from the sin of your flesh. Are y'all still in the house? God help us a holy to be a Holy Ghost filled church. Help us to be a New Testament church. Amen. Notice chapter 1, please. There, and look at verse 11. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. In that verse, Peter is talking about the prophets of the Old Testament. And notice he says, the Old Testament prophets, searching what a word ma- of what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them did signify. Notice Peter said the preachers of the Old Testament, he said the Spirit of Christ was in them. Every prophet of the Old Testament had the Holy Spirit in them. Isn't that what you read there? Yes. Yes. He said all the prophets of the Old Testament had the Spirit of Christ are the Holy Ghost in them, in them. Well, what did the Holy Ghost do for them back then? Notice Second Peter now. Notice Second Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I got saved, I didn't get any counseling. Uh, da, 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 trying to help me to live right. Oh, I just became an obedient child. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. I said by the Spirit of God. Now notice what Peter now says about Old Testament prophets. Notice Second Peter chapter 1 and look at verse 21. For the prophets, or for the prophecy, came not in old times by the will of man. But what? Read it. But, the, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost within them. Now here's what I want you to see. Look at me. Peter said in the first instance, he, he said the Old Testament prophets had the Spirit of God in them, right? Then he mentions the prophets of old again, and he said, and they were holy men. What's the point? When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you become a holy man. I said, when your spirit filled, you become a holy person. Notice, Peter first said, they were spirit filled. Then Peter said, they were holy men. What made them holy men? The Holy Ghost in filling. Are y'all in the house? You want to start to live right for the Lord, then you need to seek him till he fills you with his precious Holy Spirit. There is no holy person without being filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he purifies your soul. He sanctifies your life. He brings you into obedience to the word. And by the Holy Spirit, you become a holy man, a holy woman, a holy child. It's by the Holy Ghost. Are y'all here? The angel told Mary, that holy thing that shall be born in you shall be of God. And then the angel told Mary, you shall be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is going to impregnate you. You see, anything that the Holy Ghost produces becomes a holy thing. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. I said we, oh God, notice Jude, please. The second from the last book in your Old Testament. Notice Jude, please. Second from the last book in the Old Testament. I'm sorry, in the New Testament. Revelation, then Jude comes right before Revelation. Notice Jude, verse 19. Now, please listen. Like Peter... Jude was filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. I said, just like Peter, Jude was filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire on the day of Pentecost. How do you know? Because Jude is Jesus' blood brother. And the Bible says Mary and all of Jesus' brethren, his blood brothers, were in the upper room to receive the Holy Spirit. And Jude is one of those who is a half-brother of Jesus. He was in the upper room. So when the Holy Ghost fell, he was another candidate to have received the baptism of fire. So these men, they speak out of their experience, not out of dead doctrine. See, the Holy Spirit has become nothing but a doctrine in the church. In Bible day, he wasn't a doctrine, he was an experience. Are y'all still here? And notice what verse 19 says. Notice this Holy Ghost filled man speaking. Notice he says, these are they in the church who separate themselves? What are they? Sensual. Sensual meaning they are carnal. They are fleshly. They are worldly. They are worldly. They are carnal. They are fleshly. They live by their natural senses. They are sensual. Why? Read it. I don't care how long you've been in the church. Until you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to be sensual. You're going to be worldly. You're going to be fleshly. Why? Because you're not spirit-filled. Notice what Jude said about people in the church. He said there's some folks in the church. They're still sensual because they have not received the Holy Ghost. He didn't say they didn't receive the blood of Jesus. They're without the spirit. Look at the next verse. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most, most, what kind of faith? faith. Now, you see, that's never again spoken in church circles in America anymore. We talk about faith, but we never talk about holy faith. Well, the faith of your New Testament. You know, Jude wrote and said, I'm writing to you that you might contend for the faith. You might fight for the faith that was once delivered to the believers. Oh, there's a faith that they had then we have to fight for. Their faith was a holy faith. What does that mean? Their faith produced holiness. Their faith required holy living. And Jude said, we have to fight for this. He said, because there are men who crept into the church who's turned the grace of God into lasciviousness or a license to sin. Say, so we got to fight for the true faith. The true faith is a holy faith. Now, notice what he says. 
He says there are some folks in the church, they are sensual. He says because they have not the spirit. Then he says, but you all who listen to me as a true man of God. He said, build up yourselves. Be built up. Don't be torn down. Building up yourselves. On your most, most holy, most holy faith. How? Say it loud. You built up yourself in a holiness of faith through Holy Spirit praying. It's through the Holy Ghost. He says, folks who don't have the Holy Ghost, they're sensual. He says, but don't be like those people. They separate themselves. They don't want to be a part of this kind of teaching because they can't live right. But he said, but you all, you all listen to me. You can keep your holy faith. You can walk in your holy faith. It's not just holy. He said it is most holy. But this is how you get established built up on your faith he says you got to have the Holy Ghost you got to pray in the Holy Ghost you got to spend some time daily pray in the Holy Ghost pray in the Holy Ghost pray in the Holy Ghost it'll keep you from being sensual it'll keep you from being worldly it'll keep you from being fleshly how did you know he received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost? He knew what the fire of the Holy Spirit did for his life. He knew Holy Spirit fire makes a difference. Well, the question becomes, do we know about this today? Have we drifted so far from the New Testament and don't even know it? Teaching doctrines that are basically lies. Notice, please. Look at a couple of verses down. Look at verse 24. Notice he says, Now unto him, now unto the Lord that is able, He's able to keep you from what? From falling back into sin. Woo! He's able. To keep you from falling. And to present you how? Now how does he keep us from falling? How does he keep us faultless? Unblameable? By the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's able to keep us this way until he shows up. He's able to keep us in this corrupt, evil, lust-filled, seductive world. He's able to keep us. But notice, you're not able to do it yourself. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for watching Victory for Today. To request your copy of today's broadcast on CD or DVD, call 407-296-7131 or email us at victoryfortoday at aol.com. Until next time, remember, only through the cross of Christ, there's hope for tomorrow and victory for today.